Thomas and Lily arrive at their Musham and Cookham's home in the country, nestled in the picturesque Rocky Mountains. The cozy cabin is surrounded by tall cedar trees and low green bushes bursting with ripe berries. Have fun, you two. Don't get into too much trouble, says Father. Thomas tries not to think of all the mischief his little sister could get into. Inside, Cookham is busy in the kitchen making soap berry jam. No sneaking any, warns Cookham. But it smells so good, exclaims Lily. Cookham tells them the jam will be waiting for them in the morning, but now it's time for bed. That night, Thomas sleeps soundly while a soft breeze blows through the curtains. That is, until he hears a noise coming from downstairs. <gasps> what was that? yawns Thomas. Thomas rolls out of bed and heads for the kitchen, where he sees Lily reaching for the soapberry jam. Lily, what are you doing? Thomas scolds Lily as he herds her back to the bedroom. The jam is for breakfast, Lily. Now get back to bed. Thomas climbs into bed and falls back to sleep but not for long. Thomas jumps up, his eyes wide. Oh, not again, moans Thomas as he climbs out of bed. When he walks into the kitchen, he sees Lily standing on a stool, fiddling with the radio. Lily, stop that! You're going to wake the whole house up! but she turns the radio even louder. Over the sound of the radio, they hear footsteps coming toward the kitchen. Thomas and Lily both turn to see Musham in the doorway, looking very, very annoyed. Musham marches them both back to their bedroom. He tucks them both in and sits down beside the bed. I'm going to tell you a story that I heard as a boy, sighs Musham. All the Coast Salish children know this story, and after I heard it, I never snuck out of bed again. One night, during a potlatch, the children were being looked after by a teenage boy not much older than Thomas. When the sun began to set, he called for all of them to come into the longhouse, as it was time for bed. But the children didn't listen to him, not even when he told them that Kalkalech was waiting to snatch them up if they didn't get to bed. Instead of listening, the children got distracted by a delicious smell coming from the forest. It was their favorite treat, candied salmon. Rather than going into the longhouse, they followed the delicious scent into the forest. When the boy realized what had happened, he went after them. He wandered deep into the dark forest, looking everywhere, but it was as if the children had vanished into thin air. Suddenly, an arm reached out and plucked him up as if he weighed nothing at all and dropped him in a big wicker basket. Inside the basket, he found the children huddled together. They all knew who had caught them. It was Kalkalech, the scary old woman who eats the toes of children as if they were grapes. The children were very frightened, but the boy had an idea. He cut a hole in the basket just big enough for the littlest boy to slip through. He told the boy to run home as fast as he could and get help. And with that, the brave little boy slipped out of the basket and into the bushes. 
Kalkalech carried the basket filled with the children through the dark forest. Her long black nails scraped across the rocks, and her heavy, hairy feet thumped as they hit the earth. After a long, awful trip, they arrived at her house, deep in the forest. Once inside, Kalkalech took the children from the basket one by one and tied them up in a scary room filled with laughing skulls. They could feel her hot, stinky breath as she leaned in close to get a good look at each of them. Cackling with glee, Kalkalech painted her face red and began to sing and dance, happy that she'd caught so many tasty children. But while she was busy, the older boy used his knife to cut himself free. By then, Kalkalech had worked up an appetite from dancing and turned towards the children ready to eat. As he untied the children, they picked up whatever they could find and threw it at Kalkalech. They knocked her off balance and then pushed her into the fire. Kalkalech turned into a swarm of mosquitoes and attacked the children. The children ran out the door into the forest, with the mosquitoes following closely behind them. They ran and ran, but were unsure of where they were going. Finally, they ran into the arms of their parents, led by the little boy who'd escaped from the basket. He made it all the way home and told the grown-ups what had happened. The children were very happy to see their parents. They promised they would always go to bed when they were told and never sneak out again. Because if they did, they knew Kakalech would get them. Mushum kisses Thomas and Lily goodnight with a satisfied smile on his face. Stay in bed, you two, Mushum says as he leaves the room. Thomas, Lily whispers, pulling the covers over her face. Do you think Cockleyt is outside? I don't know, says Thomas. But remember, she'll only get you if you sneak out of bed. Don't worry, I'm not going anywhere. Lily drifts off to sleep, happy that her big brother Thomas is close by. Thomas won't admit it, but he feels happy to have Lily next to him, too. The next morning, Thomas and Lily wake to the smell of Cookum's cooking. Something smells good, says Lily. I think I know what it is, says Thomas. They hop out of bed and run down to the kitchen. When Lily sits down at the table, she notices something on the windowsill. Candied salmon! Oh no! cries Lily. Cockleys must have been here. Don't worry, Lily. Cookum puts her hand on Lily's shoulder. I put the salmon there for your lunch this afternoon. They all laugh, relieved, and Thomas and Lily help themselves to Cookham's soapberry jam. It's as delicious as ever. <laughs>